It's time now for Quick Take by the Numbers, where we give you numbers that tell the story. This morning's number is 2.1 million. The first COVID-19 shots have been given to more than 2.1 million people in six countries. That's according to data collected by Bloomberg. It's the start of the biggest vaccination campaign in history and one of the largest logistical challenges ever undertaken. Here in the U.S., 614,117 doses have been administered. That's according to a nationwide tally from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Those numbers are expected to surge in the coming days with the distribution of a second vaccine by Moderna. The U.S. is allocating 5.1 million doses of Pfizer and BioNTech's vaccine and 6 million doses of Moderna shot for distribution through this week. Both vaccines require two doses taken several weeks apart, and the second doses are being held in reserve until they're ready to be administered. The vaccine is being distributed based on state population. Joining me now is Bloomberg News' senior healthcare editor, Drew Armstrong. He joins us live from Atlanta. Drew, um, this is one of the largest logistical challenges ever undertaken, and your team has this in-depth vaccine tracker ongoing. What are the emerging leaders or trends that you're seeing when it comes to distribution? Yeah, it's, I'll emphasize, very, very early days, but we wanted to follow state by state, and in some cases at the city level, how this vaccine rollout was going. I think one of the things that we're seeing is that there's a handful of states that are actually doing quite well uh, early on. Uh, West Virginia, the Dakotas, and Alaska hmm. actually leading the nation in terms of per capita vaccinations. West Virginia's have burned through most of their week one allocation. The governor was out there saying, I'm, I'm hungry and I'm pounding the table for more uh, in terms of getting vaccine out to folks. And then you're seeing some other big states. Illinois and now, I believe, has done over 70,000 inoculations. Uh, California, New York, Colorado, Florida, all up there as well. We expect these numbers to really skyrocket as we deal with uh, reporting lag coming in. But you know, right now we're kind of seeing this, this early stages of the vaccination campaign and just watching the numbers tick up. It's, it's great to see these numbers tick up. I want to hit on the Dakotas for a second here because these two states have, have just been hit so hard when it comes to COVID. The numbers coming out of the Dakotas over the last few months have been absolutely awful. What is it about these states that make them leaders when it comes on a per capita basis to actually giving that first shot of the vaccine? Is it because the population density is, 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 is it's not very dense or is yeah, it for yeah. another reason? It's a really good question, and I and I honestly think it's one that we don't know the answer to yet, especially since we really are just in, you know, finishing up week one of this. I think a better way of measuring this is going to be in a couple of weeks. One of the things we do know is going on is that distribution of these vaccines and, and administration right now is very centralized. This is being done at big health centers, uh, you know, hospitals, um, and, and increasingly it will be done at, at nursing homes. So if you have a handful of big healthcare centers, or you've done a particularly good job at getting vaccine out to your hospitals and your clinics, um, you'll do big batches of people at once. So in a lot of cases, it's going to be about the logistics of saying, hey, everybody here gets their shot, you know, in the next couple of days, and we're going to really do a good job. We'll see big spikes of numbers like that. One of the things we do expect in the coming weeks is to see those numbers become a little bit more level as they come in when we get this out uh, more toward the general public and less out of these institutional settings. I was following your tweets really closely over the weekend, Drew, because you were giving updates to the vaccine tracker. Can you just talk a little bit about how you and your team built this and, and where you're getting the data? Sure. So um, we built this over the last couple of months in anticipation that we would get this. I will say that we had a huge amount of behind the scenes help from the COVID tracking project. We worked with a lot of their volunteers and staff to to build our data collection infrastructure. We have a giant spreadsheet that we pull this all in and hand harvest this data from state dashboards. We call the states who haven't reported numbers every day. I was on a DM with the Ministry for Foreign Affairs for Iceland um, to get their <laughs> vaccination numbers in. So really, this is a lot of on the ground reporting combined with states, you know, harvesting data and collecting it and putting it in. We have a big data shift for two hours a day every afternoon where we input this stuff into our spreadsheet and push it out on the website. Um, we do anticipate that the CDC is going to start bulk reporting this data 
in the coming weeks, and we can't wait for that, um, though we also believe that there's likely to be some additional, more granular data, demographic information, uh, vaccines by maker that we don't know yet how they're going to report or if they're going to report. And we're always looking for more data sources to make this as rich and interesting as possible. Yeah, it's it's, it's incredibly helpful. And, and the visuals just really contextualize the rollout, not just here in the United States, but across the world. I do wonder, because we've seen emergency use authorization for the Moderna vaccine, as well as the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, which one is next? How, how is your team thinking about it? Yeah, the, we're going to watch the, the, I believe the Moderna vaccine began to ship out um, this week. And so we're going to watch that to start hitting and really increasing the numbers. And then, you know, in addition to that, I, I think we are going to begin to see these vaccines creep into more and more settings kind of outside the initial hmm. role of hospitals. Um, another important thing that we really want to watch is how are states doing working through their allocations? I think we're looking for measures of kind of vaccine program efficiency, you know, are you are you using up what you got? Are you doing a good job? You know, if the federal government sent you 500,000 doses, are you using up those 500,000 doses pretty quickly? Or are you sitting on a whole lot of vaccine stock because you haven't been able to roll this out efficiently? So we'll be introducing stuff like that um, in the coming days and weeks as a way to help uh, normal citizens and also to help state departments and public health officials get a good view of what's going on out in the rest of the country. What do the early data tell us, though, Drew? Do, does it seem like the U.S. is actually doing a good job. As you and your team write in this piece, uh, this is the uh, one of the largest logistical challenges ever undertaken in the biggest vaccination campaign in history. What's the report card thus far? You know, I, I honestly will just say I think it's it really is true too early to tell. Um, we need to see what happens when vaccinations are in. I think the time to assess that is when vaccinations have gotten into the millions and we know than how things are going. Um, you can see comparatively against countries like the UK, they already have, I believe, 500,000 people vaccinated. Obviously, that's a much bigger percentage of their population than the US, and they've done that, I believe, in about um, uh, around two weeks or so. It's taken them to get there. So there's going to be a bit of a, you know, not just a state-by-state -state race, which we're already seeing. Illinois' uh, uh, governor's office was out there touting their um, their lead overall in our ranking. The West Virginia governor put out a statement saying West Virginia gets it done, um, citing us. I believe we're also going to see the same sort of kind of um, healthy competition among countries uh, as well. We've got the EU close to approve, or I believe has actually uh, cleared the Pfizer vaccine for emergency use. So we're going to be counting that. Um, the international competition to, to get these inoculations done is going to be a very interesting one as well. But I think we need to wait probably a couple more weeks until we have a really yeah. solid set a vaccination data to say, you know, is this going well or is it not? This is just an absolutely incredible tool, Drew. Kudos to you and your team for, for pulling this off. And I encourage everybody to check it out. It's available at Bloomberg.com. Bloomberg News Senior Healthcare Editor Drew Armstrong joining us live from Atlanta today, Drew. Thanks as always. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.